So the book of Job, we're going to study it today, and like I said, we're going to have uh, Felix give us uh, the introduction here about the historicity and, and details about the book, and then um, and then uh, we'll we'll go from there. Thank you, Felix. You're welcome. Uh, so basically, uh, I wanted to share just a little bit of what I know, uh, what I've um, you know researched and. Uh, things I found out about Job, even though the Bible does tell us that he was a man who um, indeed went through trials uh, and uh, went through uh, a time of testing, which was pretty bad. And it wasn't a good ordeal what he went through. And for most of us, I mean, we can relate in some way, in some shape or in some form with this man, because we go through things like this a lot, you know, in our lives. We've had tough times in our lives, uh, moments where we just want to give up or throw in the towel. Uh, you know, things that, uh, you know, pop up uh, and are meant to derail us or distract us or even discourage us. And, uh, of course, you know, um, the, you know, Job himself was a man who was indeed, um, you know, he suffered a lot and he went through a lot of trials uh, and, and um, persecutions. And, uh, you know, he was insulted. He was uh, looked down upon and uh, he was alone, destitute. And he went through all these things, but at the same time, he tried to remain faithful. Now, for a lot of us, it's really not easy, um, you know, going through things. For all of us, actually. I mean, we go through things every time, every day in life. But uh, being faithful is the last thing that we think about doing when we go through these type of things or when we've had, well, you know, the problems we've had or trials we've had and, you know, or trials that we're going to face. And sometimes, you know, these things happen uh, as a means to test our faith uh, and uh, our, you know, obedience to God and, 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 and us remaining in him and in his word. You know, will we remain in him or will we not? Uh, will we continue in our walk with God or will we not? You know, so these things happen, you know, for a reason. You know, and even though God already knows the answer, but God also lets us uh, do as we choose, which, of course, God already knows beforehand the choices that we will make before we make them. But he lets us choose. He lets things go their own course anyway, because uh, be as it may that he gave us free will and he uh, enabled us to choose freely. So God lets, you know, lets us do what we do or go through the things we go through for a reason, for a set purpose, for a set reason. Uh, but uh, basically Job itself, uh, the name actually Job uh, is Hebrew uh, from the Hebrew word Yov, meaning persecuted <laughs> and hated. So uh, right there, uh, the man himself, had gone through a lot of things, even though he at first started out prosperous and happy and rich and wealthy. And, you know, he had a beautiful wife. He had beautiful kids. I mean, he got everything that a lot of us could possibly ask for and, you know, ask God for or want, <laughs> you know. But at the same time, when the time came when, you know, God decided, you know, to let Satan take it all away from him, you know, because first of all, God didn't even, uh, wasn't thinking of doing it, uh, wasn't, you know, I mean, he probably, you know, when Satan came to him to, to incite Job, you know, um, it was amazing how God, you know, just allowed Satan to to do it, to, to test him. But at the same time, God already knew that Job would be faithful, and in spite of what he would go through and what he went through, he would be faithful to the end. So God never had doubts about him, and he doesn't doubt any of his servants either and any of those who love him in the same way. So um, just to share briefly a little bit about Job, uh, Job actually, uh, I overheard some people last time, last, last discussion we had about Job. Um, I think somebody mentioned that. I don't know if Job was really real or this was just a story. I don't know who it was exactly, but basically I want to clarify that uh, Job was indeed a real person, uh, and he actually was Mideastern. He lived in the Middle East. Uh, as you may very well know, uh, it is believed that the book of Job actually was one of the oldest books ever written, uh, possibly before Genesis or during um, or possibly later on um, written either during the same time as Genesis. Many people believe it could have been Moses uh, who wrote it, too, along with Genesis. Um, but the, the setting of the story itself took place sometime between uh, the Tower of Babel and Abraham. So um, basically, um, it was basically, a, you know, a very ancient time, but nevertheless, it was the dawn of a new world. 
it was a post-flood world. It was already the world after the flood. So um, Genesis 9, uh, 18 to 19 tells us that uh, the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, uh, after the flood, they had children. And then, you know, they had many, many children. They had families. And eventually uh, from them came all the, the people that were scattered all over the earth. Uh, that's what Genesis 18 to uh, 19 states. So uh, basically, Job uh, himself, I'm going to go a little bit, uh, review who his ancestor was. His ancestor was Shem. Uh, he was one of the three sons of Noah. Uh, and so, so basically, these are the nations that descended from Shem. Um, the genealogical records given for Shem and his descendants are the most complete in the Bible. This is most certain, certainly because it is from Shem that the nation of Israel was later formed. And through Israel came the Messiah. However, when Shem speaks of himself, he considers another identity more important. He is the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder. Genesis 10.21. Eber is a great-grandson to Shem, Shem to Arphaxad, to Salah, to Eber. It is unusual that the record keeper would single out a great-grandson uh, of his, unless you know that great-grandson uh, was a significant person in the events of the day. Please recall that the events of Babel took place within the lifespan, within the lifetime of the third generation after the flood, counting from the sons of Noah, and that Noah and Shem and many of the others lived up until the time of Job and Abraham. Shem lived to be 500 years. Uh, well, he lived 502 years later after the flood. Uh, that means he was still alive. He was still living when Abraham had died some 467 years after the flood. <laughs> The record keeping was uh, not a scattered collection of notes and memories. The birth dates and um, <clears throat> people mentioned were personally related and well known to those keeping the logs. It should not be a surprise, therefore, that Shem would have bragged a bit on Eber. Eber seems to have been the king of Ebla, um, a major city of that area located in northern Syria that has provided a wealth of information about the early centuries after ancient Babel. Eber is connected with a term, with a Hebrew, uh, the H sound is a common linguistic addition, basically, uh, over time. So, um, <clears throat> therefore, the children of Eber would include Pelek and direct descendants of, uh, and so on, down to Terah and Abraham, okay, uh, the one whom God chose to begin the nation of Israel. <clears throat> it may well have been that Abram, Abraham, uh, okay, or Terah told um, Shem directly of the vision that God gave to Abraham. This would have um, basically dove detailed, excuse me, dovetailed tightly with the prophecy that Noah spoke about Shem in Genesis uh, 926. And Shem would have been thrilled to see one of his great grandsons, especially called to be the father of many nations. Um, Genesis 17.4, of course. Shem would uh, therefore have been uh, proud to be called the father of the children of Eber. Many of the Semitic or, excuse me, Shemitic or Semitic nations had relatively short lives and are lost to antiquity. Uh, however, several were prominent and can be identified rather easily. Elam was the forebear of the Elamites, a group that later merged with the Medes, who themselves descended from Madai, one of Japheth's sons. Asher's name became connected to the Assyrians. The early city of Asher was evidently taken over by Nimrod and the Sumerian peoples. Lud is identified as the head of the Lydians, and Aram developed the Arameans, who later became the Syrians. The, uh, several other named uh, descendants of Shem seem to have uh, been absorbed by various people groups uh, that settled in southern and eastern Arabia. And this is more specifically around this area where Job had lived. Um, the most important descendant of, of, uh, is, of course, Abram, who later became Abraham, the father of many nations. The son of the promise, Isaac, uh, produced Jacob and Esau. Jacob was the father of the 12 sons who became the tribes of the nation of Israel. The sons of the bondwoman, Hagar, was Ishmael. Abraham later married Keturah, and that, and that union produced six sons, seven grandsons, and three great-grandsons who are named in the Bible in Genesis 25, 1-4. Okay, so basically, um, so the families eventually, uh, you know, Ishmael, uh, Esau, and the sons born by Keturah, all related to Abram, produced most of the nations that are thought of today as the Islamic people groups, 
and those are many nations indeed. So basically going along with the nations, more or less, the groups that came from Shem, um, I'm just going to go over a little bit uh, about Job now. So uh, basically, attached to the Western literature of the Psalms, the Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon, the book of Job is probably the oldest section of the Old Testament. No one is absolutely sure who wrote it, but the specific judgments given at the fall of man and the uh, several references to the great flood of Noah's day and the events immediately following the disbursement of the nations at Babel would suggest that Job himself uh, authored this epic poem. So it is, it is believed. Um, the main purpose for evaluating this book uh, <clears throat> here is to gain a perspective on the, uh, the Earth's condition at the time of Abraham. A straight event-to-event -event calculation of the birth records from Shem to Abram would put Abram's birth at 900, excuse me, 292 years after the flood. The dispersal of Babel would have taken place sometime early in the 2nd or 3rd century, thus making the events described in the book of Job sometime during the 4th century, probably in the years before Abram left Ur of the Chaldees with his father Terah to go to Haran. Thus God has given us an insight of the character of the nations that had been displaced from the area around Babel. The book of Job offers contemporary knowledge of the difficulties faced by the families who were forced to leave the settled civilization of the Babel Nineveh complex of cities, endure the hardships of survival and develop cities, businesses, and trade relations of their own. The debate between Job and his friends gives a keen insight into the theology of the day and can help Bible students grasp the challenges facing Abram and Lot when they left the safety of the well-established city of Ur to travel north and west into a far less secure territory. The book of Job takes place in the land of Uz. That's U-Z. All right. Job chapter 1, verse 1. Uz was one of the sons of Aram and a grandson of Shem. Genesis 10, verse 22 to 23. Since Shem's first son, Arphaxad, was born only two years after the flood, it is likely that his re remaining sons would have been born in some reasonable sequence of time thereafter, and daughters would have been um, inter interspersed in between, as they were in the lineages of the other sons of Noah in Genesis 11, 11, etc., Else there would, have been, there would have been no wives to produce the subsequent generations. The average age of the fathers at which their named sons were born in the generations after Shem was around 36 years old, um, dash 35 plus 30 plus 34 plus 30 plus 32 plus 30 plus 29 plus 70 equals 290 divided by 8, Genesis 11, 10 to 26. Aram, the father of Uz, may well have been the last born of the named sons of Shem, Genesis 10:22. But it is unlikely that he would have been born past the first century after the flood. Please remember that the events of Babel took place sometime during the fifth generation of the generation of Peleg, and Uz would have been alive during that event. The land of Uz is later associated with the territory of Edom, Lamentations 4:21, which is near the area southeast of the Dead Sea. That reference would indicate that Uz and his family migrated southwestward, either from the, from the area around Babel, the central Tigris and Euphrates Plateau, or from the early settlements around the mountains of Ararat. The land of Uz would have been toward the upper reaches of the Sinai Peninsula, east of Egypt, and just north of the Red Sea. Although that area is not very pleasant now, at the time of Abraham it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah like the garden of the Lord, like the, like the land of Egypt as you go towards Zoar in Genesis 13.10. Quite likely, this was one of the more beautiful spots that was safely away from the rule of Nimrod and further away from the climate shifts that were leading to the coming Ice Age. <clears throat> so now, by the time the epic poem begins, Job had established himself as one of the more well-known leaders in the area. He was wealthy, by any standards, in possession of 7,000 sheep, uh, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household, Job chapter 1, verse 3. It is likely that Job was a tradesman, something of an import-export businessman, accumulating an enormous stock that he could sell for seed stock, wholesale food supplies, and equipping distance caravans for himself and others. It is quite likely that the four friends cited in the book were connected to Job's business in some way, since they lived at different points across the Arabian Peninsula. 
Eliphaz, one of uh, Eliphaz, one of Job's friends, was from Taman, a city in the northern part of the land that later became known as Edom. Bildad, another friend mentioned in Job, was from the uh, was from Shuhu, somewhat south of Haran, near the southern borders of what is now Turkey. Zophar was from Nama, which is likely located to the east in the south of Canaan. Elihu, the young man who speaks in the later chapters of the book of Job, was from Buz, located in northern Arabia. None of these men were next-door neighbors. They came to comfort Job from some distance. Their relationship to Job is not given, but it is obvious that they knew Job over both distance and time. The two war party bands that destroyed Job's family and rustled his livestock were the Sabians and the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans had settled in the southwest tip of the Arabian Peninsula, in the area that is now known as Yemen. The Chaldeans were the people group that remained at Babel and developed a Babylonian nation in the middle of the Tigris-Euphrates River Valley. It is obvious that they were aware of Job's success, or they would not have sent raiding parties such distances. Even though the world was still developing after the flood's devastation, the population was growing and breeding programs for domestic animals were basically uh, burgoning, you know, they were burgeoning. Uh, they were being, uh, you know, it was a common thing back then, you know, uh, and so it was something that began. That, that, that sort of progress had begun uh, with farmers and uh, with people uh, and, and their animals. The book clearly indicates that Job was a person of note in his world. One of the sessions with his friends, Job was accused of having a secret sin of some sort. In his defense, Job described the respect that he had among the nobility of the region before his downfall. When I went out to the gate by the city, when I took my seat in the open square, the young men saw me and hid, and the age arose and stood. The princes refrained from talking and put their heads on their mouth. The voice of nobles was hushed and their tongues stuck to the roof of their mouth. Job chapter 29, verse 7 to 10. The next several verses tell of his generosity and charity work. Job was indeed one of the most righteous men living at that time. When the ear heard, then it blessed me, and when the eye saw, then it approved me, because I delivered the poor who cried out, the fatherless of the one who had no helper, the blessing of a perishing man came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My justice was like a robe and a turban. I, I was eyes to the blind, and I was feet to the lame. I was a father to the poor, and I searched out the case that I did not know. I broke the fangs of the wicked and plucked the victim from his teeth. Job chapter 29, verse 11 to 17. Uh, so basically, we, we see a little bit of what the book of Job entails. Uh, it even basically talks about uh, the memories as well of the flood, um, you know, afterwards, um, and I'll, re I'll share it with you real quick. Uh, Job contains many references to the flood, uh, couched in the language of those who had personal knowledge of the event, not like the latter legends and stories drawn from misty memories. He removes the mountains, and they do not know. He, over he overturns them in his anger. He shakes the earth out of its place, and its pillars tremble. He commands the sun, and it does not rise. He seals off the stars. He alone spreads out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. Job chapter 9, verse uh, 5 to 8. The word choices in this little section depict the creation being shaken to the core, trembling at the force of the awful judgment that was released on the earth. Modern creationists and flood geolo uh, geologists can only surmise what, they have happened, uh, what have happened during the year of the flood. Job and his friends were living during the lifetime of Noah and his sons and would have had access to those with a direct knowledge of the earth being moved out of its place, as well as firsthand experience with the unfathomable, unfathomable power of God and the scope of his judgment. <laughs> so um, basically I just wanted to share briefly about that, about you know, giving you a little input about Job and that you know, he was uh, basically real in many ways. He was a historic figure. Uh, and, and so the events that also happened in his life also happened to encourage those uh, and call us to uh, persevere and, and fight and, and just know that God is with us in any circumstance, in any situation, um, and that he is in control of everything. Uh, so I wanted to share also a scripture in James 
uh, 511 real quick. Uh, and it basically gives us an example of, uh, you know, um, I'll start at verse 10. And it says, brothers, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. So uh, basically, that's what I wanted to share uh, and give you a little input about Job before we began. So I'll leave you with those thoughts. And uh, uh, basically, that's what I wanted to add. So thank you very much for hearing me out.